let me directly go to the presentation first and then in the end we'll have some simple demonstrations using this amazing kit. If you look at this picture, uh, this is the situation of our science education, at least uh, at the place from where I come and maybe it is true everywhere else also. We give too much importance only to theory and we neglect experimental part of sciences. And as a result, when students study something in their science class, in the end, when they go home, they are unable to relate what they have learned to their real life. <coughs> Many times I ask this question to my students, what is the most boring and most difficult subject uh, which you have ever had? And most of the time, answer will be physics. They feel that physics is the most boring and most difficult subject. Maybe it's boring because of teachers like us, but it's definitely not a difficult to understand subject. Uh, let us talk about the problems which I generally face as a physics teacher in my 11th standard class. Basically, my students have two different problems. The first problem is that of English language, because they study uh, in vernacular medium like Marathi or in Kannada till 10th standard. And when they come to 11th, we call it a junior college. Uh, in 11th standard, everything is taught in English. So first, they need to understand English language and then science. And that makes the problem worse. Talking about physics concepts like electricity, like AC and uh, DC, uh, we teach everything from the books. So what our students know is AC is alternating current and DC is direct current. And if you ask them what exactly is the real difference between the two, they are unable to answer. Similar thing is true with electromagnetic induction. We teach electromagnetic induction, we, we teach them <coughs> Faraday's laws. Our students <coughs> mug up the things, they reproduce the same thing in the exam and get good marks. But in the end, they fail to apply these things for some real life situations. Interference of sound is one more similar thing, which is quite difficult to understand, which is, which is really very difficult to demonstrate. So only theory, theory and no scope for uh, practical part of science subject, no scope for exploration and experience. So I always wish that I, if I could take lab to my classroom and if you wish to take lab to the classroom, what are the things you need? Typically for a physics lab, we need a good quality oscilloscope. That is a costly affair. We need a function generator. We need different power supplies. We need different meters, volt meters, ammeters, frequency counters, different digital and analog devices. That's a costly affair. And it's very difficult to take all these equipments to the classroom where you can show demonstrations. So basically the problem with our education system is exam orientation evaluation system. Lack of interest, maybe lack of equipment also. But if the last reason is true, then we have an answer. Python and XPyce together can solve, solve this problem. So I'm actually talking about this amazing tool. It's a very simple device called XPyce. Experiments for young engineers and scientists. And if you uh, look at the size of that, it can easily fit into your pocket and it's all open source. Hardware and uh, software framework is all open source. And uh, I, I can easily claim that this is the smallest and cheapest science laboratory in the world. If you look at that code, in fact, this laboratory is powered by Python and with a very simple code like this, just two or three line code, you can easily fetch data from different devices and you can easily plot it as a graph, as a function of time. Now, in any, any scientific subject, it is very important for a student to understand these graphs. Because any phenomena, if represented with a proper graph, it's very easy to understand that. And this device, with the power of Python, can help us in this, this area. Now, XPyce, just to introduce you, it's a low-cost device that can generate and measure voltage as a function of time. Uh, it has a built-in signal generator. It behaves, it, it functions like a, a digital storage oscilloscope. It's powered by USB. Microsecond timing resolution helps to conduct many sophisticated experiments. In fact, we can go up to one microsecond resolution. So if there is any fast phenomena like charging a capacitor, charging or discharging a capacitor, uh, where process takes place within few milliseconds, and within that time interval, if one needs to record 100, 200 readings, then this can help us. So free software and open hardware framework for developing science experiments, demonstrations and projects.
is the short explanation of this tool expires. Hardware is inexpensive, as I have claimed in the beginning. This is the cheapest pocket science lab. Design is flexible, and because it is open and expandable, one can use this for their own research projects. It can be used as a standalone system for for control and monitoring in in many processes. So, Expice is for students <coughs> as an affordable personal laboratory which they can carry in their bag everywhere. Along with Expice, what additional things they need are small coils, maybe LEDs, resistors, capacitors, which are very affordable and easily available. For teachers, it can work like a tool for classroom demos, experiments, and also to develop new experiments. For engineers and for hobbyists and hackers, it is the best testing tool. <coughs> and because it is using power of your processor in the computer, timing accuracy is extreme. Now let us talk about what features we have here. It's a 12-bit analog input-output device. There are digital input-output terminals. You can measure time intervals with the resolution of one microsecond. You can generate a sine wave. There are two square wave generators which are programmable. You can generate square waves of whatever frequency you need with a very simple Python code, just one or two lines of Python code and you can easily generate these signals. Uh, about 50 to 60 ready-made GUIs are available for various experiments. Python programmable and it's royalty free. A freedom to use this at various level of sophistication. If you are not a programmer, like for most of us teachers, programming is, is a difficult thing, right? So for people who do not know ABC of programming, they can directly use this device with ready-made GUI programs. And if you are learning Python or if you are a little bit familiar with Python, you can use Python library and you can, you can conduct various experiments with this. And level 3 will, be, uh, will involve microcontroller programming and making standalone systems. Okay, uh, let us skip this idea, like design and all. This is the earlier version. It was a part of Phoenix project, physics with homemade equipment and experiments uh, by IUAC, that is Inter University Accelerator Center at New Delhi. These people are uh, in the nuclear field and they have a powerful accelerator which is run on Python and Linux. Yeah, this is the earlier design in 2011 with the continuous efforts to uh, reduce the cost and increase the accuracy. Okay, this is uh, the latest device now. This is the product in 2012. Uh, it's really a pocket lab now. Much more cheaper and compact. So how do we communicate with this box? It's really very simple. There is one library, Xpice. So you can just import that libraries and with very simple functions, you can read or write outputs. Say for example, if you want to uh, read whatever input is given, like say statement print p dot read inputs. Similarly, you can write outputs, means you can decide the output to be high or low. You can you can easily generate signals also with such similar functions. As an example, if I want to if I want to uh, give data to one channel of the device, read that data, maybe take hundred readings and plot. Now to take that electrical signal, access that electrical signal, record readings and plot. Uh, we just need to write a two-line code. Like that capture function is defined here in the library. Capture and just say plot and show. So it's very simple for a person who has not learned ABC of Python. He can spend just one day on these things and he'll be able to manage this. Okay, a similar program for generating square waves. Just two lines. Okay, this is the main GUI of the device. It's a four channel CRO, cathode ray oscilloscope like design. You have all the functionalities of a very powerful digital oscilloscope. We have four channels here, channel A1, A2, IN1 and IN2 and those can be plotted here in real time. You also have all the other digital functions that you need in electronics lab. And by writing very simple Python code here, you can, you can uh, do many other experiments. Okay, let's talk about what kind of experiments one can do. We can study logic gates, almost all digital ICs you can study, function of uh, uh, digital ICs. Uh, one interesting experiment that I'll be demonstrating later on is interference of sound. Transistor characteristics. 
acceleration due to gravity by using method of time of flight and there are many more experiments which are already designed by volunteers and ready-made GUIs are available for this and the code is open so that one can use this ready-made code for their own experiments. Last year I got opportunity to work with FOSS Asia for my GSOC project and we could design new experiments and we could reduce the cost of existing equipment by almost 90%. For example, there is one setup that we use in physics laboratory. Uh, it's for studying Newton's laws. That is called linear air track device. And if you talk about the cost, it is it is more than two lakh rupees in Indian currency. And with this effort, we, we could use one small sensor called SRF05. It's an ultrasonic sensor, which is very low cost. And we could design our own linear air track. And with that, we could uh, reduce the cost by 95%. It's, it's hardly 10,000 rupees now. Like that, we used DC motor as a pickup device. We used SRF sensor for uh, position measurement, and we used small, small uh, pressure plates from piezo buzzers as pressure sensors. Yeah, maybe the images are not visible. I'll, I'll just show that thing later on. We used ultrasonic position sensor to fetch the data from moving objects and to study oscillatory motion or a linear motion. One can plot velocity time graph, one can plot acceleration time graph and position time graph using a very simple Python code. Okay, this is one very difficult experiment to demonstrate in the laboratory. But with XPyze it's really very easy. We use 80 tiny microcontrollers to generate sine waves. And when we superpose two sine waves, you are supposed to get this called Lissage's figures. A very complicated mathematical concept, but it will be easy if you demonstrate these things directly to the students and then give mathematics behind it. So idea was to reduce the cost. As I've told you from the place where I come, it's very difficult to afford these laboratory equipments. Students get to try these experiments in the laboratory only when they come to 11th standard. Till 10th standard, they do not have access to the laboratory. So the idea behind this project was giving something to the students so that they can, they can play around, they can learn something by doing themselves. So in an attempt to reduce the total cost of the equipment, we tried interfacing XPyze with Raspberry Pi, it works very well. Then we tried connecting XPyze with Akash tablet, that was Government of India project. And one can, one can have a complete setup of full-fledged lab in just 3000 rupees. That is, I think, less than 100 Singapore dollars. One student has contributed and developed an Android app. So now XPyze can be connected to any Android mobile phone and one can really have a full-fledged lab in his pocket. Basically, this is our goal, right? Uh, if you compare the cost of these two equipments, both have similar hardware, but the ability to manufacture in bulk, in like large quantity, that makes the difference. Maybe if somebody helps us to manufacture this in, this in large quantity, we can still reduce the price. And since the project is open, anybody can pick up the design and they can develop it here itself. Okay, it's a good idea to skip this. We have a, a, a friend who is working as a volunteer because of his efforts. Now, XPyze site is available in French, also in Spanish. And there is a project going on in European Union called Pocket Science Lab with XPyze as the main component. <coughs> Okay, uh, it comes with the basic necessary tools like uh, some piezo buzzers, some coils, uh, DC motor, some transistors, resistors, LEDs, and capacitors. Okay, so for details, one can log on to xpice.in. Maybe it's a good idea, I'll just demonstrate something. It will be quite interesting to see these uh, real experiments instead of just talking. Okay, I'll just give you a small demo of how one can use a simple Python code and access this box. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm connecting a sine wave generated from this box to one channel of the box. First, I'll just demonstrate with a code and then maybe we can, we can try it with the ready-made GUI. I just set a simple code 
and we'll execute that. Just a second. Okay, because I'm already accessing the device with a simple different program. It gives error. So I'll just connect this sine wave generated to one channel of XPice and let us execute that program once again. Yeah, so what it does is this is the sine wave generated from the box itself. There is it built sine wave generator and the program is very simple. It's just two lines of code. First you need to import the Python library and this thing does the job. Okay, there is one inbuilt function written capture and you can capture the data using channel 1 and you can decide at what should be the gap between two readings like here it is 3 microsecond and I have recorded 100 readings. So in just one millisecond you can record hundreds of readings and then you can plot it. If you think of using any other programming language to do the same thing, you need to write hundreds of lines of code. But Python makes it really very easy and in just a couple of lines, you are able to fetch the data from a hardware and plot the graph. Okay, this is the main... Just a second. Yeah, this is the main GUI. I have connected sign to channel A1. So if I just change the time scale, you'll be able to see the sine wave. And you can drag this channel to say fit, you can do curve fitting. Again, there is a Python program behind this and you can actually measure the frequency of the wave. It is about 150 hertz. There's a very simple experiment that can be demonstrated to science students. For that, what we need is just a small piece of wire connected to channel A1. Now, I have not connected anything else to this box. I have just connected one piece of small wire and if you look at this waveform which I am getting here, right, it appears as if there is some electricity being supplied to that channel. Now if I just hold this wire in my hand, you can see that the amplitude of the signal is increased and if I leave it, again the amplitude is decreased, right, so if I, I feel as if I am generating electricity here. Now, there is a lot of scope for discussions and understanding what exactly is happening, right? You can ask many questions to students and definitely they will respond with positive answers if you give them something like this to play with. If I touch this wire, what exactly is happening is my body is acting like an antenna and it is, it is taking the AC that is radiated by these power lines. We have electricity here and these power lines are radiating AC and that radiated AC is being captured by my body and that is being plotted here. Now just to verify, if you read the frequency here at this point, frequency is 49.9, close to 50 hertz. And I guess that is the frequency of AC that is used in Singapore, right? So this is the power of this box. While demonstrating a very important phenomena called, called electromagnetic induction, maybe before that I'll, I'll just finish this interference of sound. For interference of sound, what we need is, we need two sources of sound and when these two sources, these two sound waves are mixed, if they superpose, you should get a different kind of pattern. Like when waves are in phase, amplitude should increase and when the waves are out of phase, they should destroy each other. So when these two waves are travelling in a medium, what should happen is, amplitude of the signal should increase, decrease, increase, decrease and that should happen periodically. It's quite difficult to demonstrate in the classroom. And since the phenomenon is very fast, our ears are not able to detect that change. So best thing is, record the readings and plot it as a graph. So what I'll do here is, okay, there are ready-made GUIs available here. I'll take that ready-made GUI to do this experiment, interference of sound. 
I have connected two buzzers here. Maybe it will be a good idea if you can see this. these buzzers, small buzzers which are easily available in the market as sources of sound and these are powered by two square waves which are being generated by this device. There is one square wave one here, this is one source and this is the second source. Now, now let us test these things. First I will enable that SQR1 and I will say start. Right? If I bring it close to the mic, it should generate a signal. One minute. Now that mic is generating a signal, right? So whatever signal it is generating, that should be given as an input to input channel of this device that I forgot to connect. So I'll just connect one wire from output of this mic. And that can be connected here to channel A1. Let's do it once again, right? If I bring this mic close to the mic here, sorry, bring this buzzer close to the mic, you can see a waveform. So basically what we are doing is we are generating a signal, converting it into a sound wave and then that is being plotted, that is being fetched by this x and being plotted in real time. Now you can see that amplitude is almost constant everywhere, whatever fluctuation is there. Okay, sorry, we need to have this. Okay, so this is the ready-made GUI and I have set this frequency to be 3500. There is one program using which you can find out what is the resonance frequency of a buzzer. You can just connect that buzzer to the device, go on increasing the frequency and you can easily find out at what frequency this gives you loud sound. That I have already tested, so it is about 3500 and that's why I have placed, I have had fixed one frequency at 3500 and that is 3600. So there is a difference of 100 words in the two frequencies. Let us test the other buzzer also. sound is little shaky. It's increasing, decreasing periodically. If I bring both the buzzers close to this mic now, you should be able to see that there is a periodic change in the amplitude. Sound intensity increases and decreases periodically. Now it will be a good idea to demonstrate something like this to the students first and then talk about the mathematical part of it, which is always boring if you do not show them something like this. And with these kind of devices like buzzers, small coils, transistors, capacitors, students can do so many things on their own. I did one very simple experiment in the beginning. Uh, as I have told you the problem with my students. English is very difficult for us when we study up to 10th in our own language. I gave this box to the students and I just demonstrated all these experiments to them without using any scientific term. Without telling them this is electromagnetic induction or this is interference or all those things. So this played around the device, they tried so many things and after 10 days we had a session and I started asking them questions. What happens if you bring the coil close to the magnet? What happens if the magnet rotates faster? What happens if you add something in the coil? And the answers were ready. So no one needs to teach them, just introduce them to the scientific terms and they are ready with their explanation. There's one more very simple ex experiment that can be done. Uh, do I have time? Maybe another five minutes. Okay. Okay. We we'll just have one simple demonstration. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm using a simple DC motor, again a low cost device, and it's being powered by a simple dry cell battery. And here I'm using a very strong neodymium magnet. 
Now if I connect this magnet here, just a So I'll just power this motor with a small battery. It can be done with the XPIZE box also. But then it's a good idea to power it using external source. And then I will use two simple coils. And these are again homemade coils. Something like this. You can use any insulating cylinder, maybe a small paper cylinder also will do and have winding of copper coil on this. About 1000 turns are required, 1000, 1500 turns. This is a pickup device. First I'll connect this. Now I'll, I'll connect these two coils to two channels of this device. One to A1 and the other to A2. And let us connect the other terminals of the coil to the ground. Now again, as I have shown you that in the beginning, a very simple program with a capture function, just 5-6 lines of code can plot this data also. So our experiment is ready. Let us create a variable magnetic field. As the magnet is rotating, we have a variable magnetic field here. And when you bring any conductor in changing magnetic field, electricity is induced there. That is a recommended induction. So what I'll do is, I'll bring one coil close to this rotating magnet. Just a second. This is not stable. Okay. Maybe we can just hold it like this. This is better. Okay, the setup is a motor and coil, something like this. No, no, it's not this one. Okay, so we have a moving magnet and two simple coils. So what we'll do is, I'll just, I'll just enable channel A1 and also A2, and then we'll just adjust this time setting. Any science students, they know what exactly this time setting is, right? Now, okay, it will be a good idea to show this one. If I bring this coil, you can, yeah, you can see the signal picked up by this first coil, the black one. If I bring it close, the amplitude increases. If I take it away, amplitude decreases. And you can try so many things with this. Maybe you can add some ferromagnetic, ferroelectric material there, right? Even a screwdriver will increase the amplitude. If you remove that, amplitude will decrease. Just add the screwdriver here, amplitude increases. Remove it, it decreases. So there is a lot of scope to understand so many things, like why any transformer coil has a core in it. Right? Now I'll, I'll just take the second coil here, 
this also gives us a signal right that is red one now if i bring both the coils on two sides of this moving magnet right one can see two waves which are changing simultaneously right crest of one wave falling on the crest of the other they are changing simultaneously here we say the waves are in phase uh, this is something difficult to teach in the classroom phase and phase difference of these ac signals so here we can say waves are in phase now if i just turn the direction of one coil now you can see they are exactly out of phase when one wave has its maxima the other wave has its minima at the same place now again just rotate the coil on one side <coughs> hold them at 90 degrees there is a phase difference of 90 degrees like this this simple instrument can provide a power to try explore experiment and learn so many things so a ready made gui is available programs are all uh, available as open source even the firmware of the device and the design schematics are also available as open source i think uh, i should stop here that's all thank you for uh, your patient listening if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer if you are expecting questions from some students i have a question uh, you shared with the support with me yeah where can we go yeah uh, it's available online expice.in is the site we don't have any here yeah we don't have anybody here we are trying to have one local dealer here in singapore as i think 12 geeks is actually trying to yeah so hacker spaces g12 geeks company uh what's the hardware that's inside the piece uh it's a pick microcontroller right microcontroller pick we had a picture uh, earlier linked to another was it a pi and anything yeah a raspberry pi it was connected It's connected to Raspberry Pi. I think you are talking about this. Yes, yes. Yeah, it works with Raspberry Pi. And now, because of course of Mr. George's, he is a volunteer from France. This is uh, uh, available in uh, Ubuntu repository. You can take it from Ubuntu Software Center. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.